Now coming to um, third slide, let us now discuss the powers and functions of the Union Parliament or we can also say the powers and functions of the Lok Sabha and the Rati Sabha. All bills other than the money bills can originate in any house of the Parliament. And I am talking this about the legislative power of the Parliament. No bill can become a law until and unless it is being agreed by both the two houses of the parliament. And if there is a disagreement, suppose, between the Lok Sabha and the Rati Sabha regarding an ordinary or non bani bill, then how the matter will be discussed and decided? Then in that case of disagreement, the president will summon both the houses of the parliament for a joint meeting. And it is in this joint sitting, issues are decided by a majority of the members of both the houses present and voting. So here I must add one important thing is that, in a joint sitting, you will always find that it is the Lok Sabha who enjoys the upper hand. Because of its numerical strength. Its numerical strength is more than Rajya Sabha. Later on, I will be discussing you the relationship between the two houses, Lok Sabha and Rati Sabha. Then at that time, I will tell you again specifically. But now here also I am telling you that this is a difference between Lok Sabha and Rati Sabha. And we can say Lok Sabha is more powerful than the Rati Sabha. So now let us see what are the important subjects over which the union parliament can make laws. First of all, in matters of union list, the parliament can make laws. So parliament has the exclusive power to make laws on all the 97 subjects mentioned in the union list. Take for example like defense, communications, foreign affairs, etc. Next, parliament can also make law matters mentioned in the concurrent list. But here you have to see that along with the state legislative assemblies, the parliament can make laws on 47 subjects mentioned in the concurrent list. So both the state legislative assembly as well as union parliament can make laws. But again another question arises that if there is a conflict between the union parliament and the state legislature on any law mentioned in this concurrent list, then whose law shall prevail? Definitely, it is the union law that shall prevail. So, this again shows that we have a strong center. And this is a very important feature of unitary government of India. Next, we will come across another term in legislative power of the parliament that is the residuary power. So, what is the residuary power? This residuary power is exclusively enjoyed by the union parliament. What does it mean? It means that the union parliament alone can make laws on all those subjects which are not mentioned in any of the three lists. That is union list, state list and concurrent list. Now one more important thing you will see that I have told you that normally parliament can make laws on the subjects mentioned in the union list. And together with the state legislative assemblies, parliament can make laws on the subjects mentioned in the concurrent list also. And the subjects that are mentioned in the state list, it is the state assembly that makes the law. But there is an exception. Even the parliament can also make laws in the matters mentioned in the state list. When? Now here we will see the answers or the conditions when the parliament can make laws on the subjects mentioned in the state list. These conditions are parliament can make laws on the subjects mentioned in the state list during the proclamation of an emergency or when the Rajya Sabha passes a resolution by two-third majority that certain subject in the state list has assumed national importance. Or when two or more states are of the opinion that the parliament should legislate on a subject given in the state list. Next important legislative power of the union parliament is or issue of ordinances. Now what is an ordinance? 
ordinances are the laws which are being promulgated by the president when the parliament are not in session so again i repeat regarding ordinances the president is empowered to promulgate promulgate means issue an ordinance at a time when the parliament is not in session this ordinance has the same effect as an act but all ordinances must be put up before both the houses of the parliament for their approval as soon as the parliament reassembles and the period is within the period of 6 weeks from the reassembly of the parliament otherwise if they are not being <coughs> approved by both the houses within a period of 6 weeks then the ordinances will cease to operate that is why ordinances are also considered as temporary laws next important thing parliament can also legislate during the period of emergency and here i am mainly concerned about president's rule or constitutional emergency as you all know when there is a total breakdown of the constitutional machinery that is the government of a particular state at that time we have constitutional emergency or president's rule the legislative assembly of that particular state is dissolved and the administration of that state comes directly under the center to the president so during this period of emergency the parliament becomes the legislature in the state concerned and assumes all powers including the financial powers of passing the state budget next we discuss the financial powers of the parliament now regarding the bills you should know there are two types of bill one is money bill and the other one is ordinary bill money bill are those which are concerned about financial matters all other matters other than money are known as ordinary bills a money bill can originate only in the lok sabha after a money bill is passed by the lok sabha it is sent to the rajya sabha for its recommendations and the rajya sabha must return the money bill within 14 days so here again i tell you that lok sabha enjoys exclusive power over money bill rajya sabha has no financial power just referring of the money bill to the rajya sabha is a constitutional formality next we come to financial under financial power the budget the parliament passes the union budget and what is a budget the union budget contains the estimate of annual income and expenditure of the government for a financial year so here you should have a clear idea little idea about the financial year this financial year is also known as the fiscal year and it is from 1st of april to 20 to 31st march of the next year all government's budget and policies are framed according to this financial year next important financial power salaries the salaries and allowances of the mps and ministers are again determined by the parliament permission for taxes no tax can be imposed or no money can be spent by the government without the approval of the parliament in matters of finance again i repeat the lok sabha enjoys more powers than the rajya sabha next we come to the discussion of the judicial powers of the parliament the first important judicial power of the parliament is impeachment of the president the parliament performs some judicial functions it has the right to remove the president from office through a special rigid constitutional procedure known as impeachment so on what ground can the president be impeached or removed from his office in case of violation of the constitution or proven grave miskanda in that case the parliament can impeach the president next the parliament can also pass the resolution for removal of the judges of the supreme court and high court so parliament can remove the judges of supreme court high court even the chief election commissioner and these important personalities are again removed by the parliament 
through the provision of impeachment when again they are being found guilty of violating the provisions of the constitution. Next important judicial power is parliament can even punish a person. When can the parliament punish a person or a member? If the parliament can punish a person for obstructing the work of the parliament or showing disrespect to the house. Or in other way, I can also express the same point like this. The parliament can punish a person on the ground of contempt of the house. Parliament also enjoys certain electoral powers or functions. They are the Parliament of India along with the state legislatures elects the President of India. The Vice President of India is elected by both the Houses of the Parliament. And even you have seen, we have discussed earlier also, the Lok Sabha elects his own Speaker and Deputy Speaker from amongst his own members, while the Rajya Sabha elects his Deputy Chairman. So that's all for electoral functions. Just in a nutshell, we will also discuss another important function that is amendment to the constitution. If you are being asked who can amend the constitution, it is none but the parliament. Both the houses of the parliament can amend the constitution. Next important topic of discussion will be control over the executive. That means how does the union parliament control the executive or you can be asked union parliament is the legislature. So how does the legislature controls the how does the legislature control the executive? Now, the Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. The ministers remain in office as long as they enjoy the confidence of a majority of the members in the Lok Sabha. Now, what are the different ways and means by which the legislature or the union parliament controls the executive? The first one is interpolation, which I have already discussed earlier. In slide 1, interpolation means the right of asking questions by the members of parliament to the ministers concerning their ministry or regarding the functioning of the government. Again, I repeat, which I have already discussed earlier, that is, the first hour of a sitting in both the houses is allotted for asking and answering questions. The other ways and means are, the parliament can control the executive by passing vote of no confidence. We have already discussed, again I am repeating, if a vote of no confidence is passed against a minister, then the whole ministry including the prime minister has to resign or the government has to resign. Another way is by passing adjournment motion and also other types of motions. One such is known as the motion of censor. This motion of censor means that is it can pass a censor motion against the conduct of a minister. The parliament has also monetary control over the executive. During the budget session, a cut motion may be moved by the parliament. Now what is a cut motion? It means the power given to the Lok Sabha to oppose a financial bill which has been discussed by the government. Next we come to the other powers and functions of the government, other miscellaneous powers. The parliament may alter the name or boundary of the state if needed. It can also form a new state by merging the territories of existing states or by separating a part of a territory from a state. Parliament makes laws regarding the composition, jurisdiction means powers and functions of the Supreme Court. The Parliament can also establish a common High Court for two or more states. So that's all for this slide. Slide 4 of discussion and the topic is relationship and points of difference between the two houses Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. When we compare the powers of Lok Sabha and those of Rajya Sabha, we notice that the constitution clearly recognizes the supremacy of the Lok Sabha in most of the matters. So let us begin with the differences between the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in matters of money bills. 
that is a legislative function. Money bills, as you all know, can only originate in the Lok Sabha. If a dispute arises as to whether a bill is a money bill or not, the decision of the Speaker of the Lok Sabha is again final. Rajya Sabha has no power to reject a money bill. It can only make recommendations, that is suggestions, the Lok Sabha may accept or reject all or any of the recommendations made by the Rajya Sabha. So, referring of the money bill to the Rajya Sabha, as I, as I have already told you earlier, is just a constitutional formality. So, Lok Sabha enjoys exclusive power in money matters. Now, let us come to ordinary bills. In case of ordinary bills, both the houses enjoy equal power. Ordinary bills can originate in either house. In case of disagreement between the two houses, the bill is referred to a joint sitting of both the houses. It seems that the two houses have been placed on an equal footing in this regard. Or we can say both the houses enjoy co-equal powers in ordinary bills. But really speaking, you will find that Rajya Sabha is in a weaker position in this matter also. Since the total membership of Rajya Sabha is less than even half of the total strength of Lok Sabha, the will of the Lok Sabha would naturally prevail at a joint sitting. Moreover, a joint sitting is again presided over by the Speaker of the Lok Sabha. Now, the next important difference is the differences between the two houses in executive matters, that is, control over the Council of Ministers. Members of both the houses can put questions to ministers about the work of their departments. That is, we can say both the members of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha enjoy the right of interpolation. They discuss all matters of public importance. But here again, Lok Sabha has more power than the Rajya Sabha. Now, next important thing is that regarding whether the Council of Ministers are accountable to Lok Sabha only or Rajya Sabha. So, what is the answer? Here the answer will be the Council of Ministers are responsible only to the Lok Sabha. So, how it, it can be, how it is possible? Now, the Council of Ministers, as I told you, is collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. The Lok Sabha members can only pass vote of no confidence against the Council of Ministers. Rajya Sabha has no power to pass a motion of no confidence or adjournment motion or censor motion. They are all moved in the Lok Sabha only. Next, we come to the election of the President and the Vice President of India. Regarding their election matters, both the houses of the parliament enjoy equal power. Next, we come to impeachment. As I have already told you, what is impeachment? It is a rigid constitutional procedure to remove the judges of Supreme Court, High Court, President, etc. So, in matters of impeachment of the President of India or the Chief Justice or a judge of the Supreme Court or of a High Court, both the houses have absolutely equal powers. Impeachment can be initiated in either house and the other house has an equal say in the judgment. Now we come to emergency provision. In case of proclamation of a national emergency and if the Lok Sabha is dissolved, it is the Rajya Sabha which shoulders, it is the Rajya Sabha, excuse me, which takes all the responsibilities of the Union Legislature. So, I have discussed some of the important exclusive powers of the Lok Sabha while explaining the relationship between the two houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Let us now conclude the chapter by telling you what are some of the exclusive powers which are enjoyed by the Rajya Sabha and not by the Lok Sabha. They are, first point, the Rajya Sabha has some exclusive powers. Please follow your textbook. And what are they? The Rajya Sabha by two-third of majority can pass a resolution empowering the parliament to make laws on certain subjects mentioned in the state list that has assumed national importance. Again, the Rajya Sabha by two-third of majority 
can pass a resolution to declare the creation of all India service. And one more point is there. As I've already discussed when I explained about the term of the Rajya Sabha, at that time I told you that Rajya Sabha is a permanent house. It cannot be dissolved. So what is its advantage or rather exclusive power? If the Lok Sabha is dissolved before or after the declaration of a national emergency, the Rajya Sabha becomes the sole de facto and de jure parliament. This is a constitutional term. What does it mean? It means that the Rajya Sabha takes over the functions of the parliament because it cannot be dissolved. And this is a limitation on the Lok Sabha. So, we have almost come to the end of the chapter. And just let me conclude the chapter by telling you that the fact remains that Rajya Sabha is not at par with Lok Sabha. But we should not forget that the Rajya Sabha is a permanent chamber. So it has to play the major role in matters such as approval of proclamation of emergency during the period when the Lok Sabha remains suspended. So that's all for the explanation of the first chapter of civics that is union, legislature. Now I'll request all of you to go through the textbook and please do a supplementary reading of the topics from the first chapter as explained and discussed here for a better understanding of the chapter. Okay, God bless you all. Keep healthy and safe.